Hi, I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics and Fantastic Four Grand Design. Today I wanted to talk about Godzilla. Now, um, this is a pitch for a comic that I did. I pitched it to IDW. IDW approved the pitch, and then they just uh, needed approval from Toho, the uh, owners of Godzilla. Toho rejected the pitch. They ultimately rejected the pitch. And this is a comic I... I've talked about this method uh, before, but um, if if there's a project I'm really excited about working on, I just start working on it before I get the uh, approval or not. I just start working on it as if as if I did get the approval because it's just that works for me. Like I just I really enjoy my job. I love doing comics, and I don't I don't want to have to sit and wait and twiddle my thumbs and then get an approval and then. Uh, you know, have to start, you know, at that at that late point. So I worked on this Godzilla comic for about a year. That's fine with me. You know, I was working on other stuff too, but this was kind of like my go-to thing where it's like, okay, I got some time to work on something. What am I going to work on today? Oh man, I really want to work on Godzilla. So I'd get, you know, right to work on Godzilla. And my backup plan was, hey, if this doesn't work out, I'll just, um, you know, take these uh, story things, uh, these story beats and ideas that I wrote and use them in my uh, creator-owned monster comic, Dragonzo the Zombie Dragon. So yeah, got rejected. So um, Godzilla's loss is Dragonzo's gain. So anyway, let's just get into it. Uh, Godzilla was like, you know, there's a couple of those sort of, you know, like bucket list properties. There's There's like a bunch of properties that I'd really love to work on at some point. It's just kind of how comics goes. Uh, you know, you're gonna you're gonna pitch more uh, you know comics than than you're gonna get accepted. So it's like, you know, I I pitched a Judge Dredd comic to IDW. IDW approved it, but uh, 2000 AD, the the rights holder for for Judge Dredd uh, ultimately um, vetoed it, uh, gave it the thumbs down. It's just part of you know part of how things go. And I guess I guess on another episode, I can I can trot out my. Uh, my Judge Dredd uh, pitch and show it to you. But anyway, so Godzilla, you know, I just, I love Godzilla. Godzilla's awesome. He, he's one of those things. I, I just would love to, you know, make make a Godzilla comic one day. Same thing with Star Wars. I'd love to make a Star Wars comic. Uh, you know, Tron, you know, there's just like a million properties that are just, you know, it would just be really fun to, to play in that world. You know, Transformers and G.I. Joe were, and GoBots were, were like that too. It's, uh, you know, there's just a special thrill to working on something you grew up with. It's kind of like, you know, you made it to the other side of the screen, the other side of the TV screen or the other side of the movie screen or the other side of the comics page. It's, uh, you know, it's a really nice feeling. It's very energizing. And just the thought of possibly making a Godzilla comic just energized me and, and I, I just went with it. You know, it's like, uh, I got to work on something. It was, it was uh, you know, during the pandemic, so there wasn't a lot going on anyway. So it's like, why not work on Godzilla and have a blast, you know, whether it gets turned into an actual comic or not. This first segment that I'm going to show you is, this was sort of like the initial conceptualizing of, of what this thing might be. You know, the best way to make a comic is make a comic. And that's, um, you know, usually I, I try to just make a comic and it's like, it's not necessarily going to be you know, what the final comic's going to be. It's just like a way for me to sort of work out certain things and, and find my way around the world. And then, and then may, maybe it is perfect. Maybe it's perfect from, uh, you know, from day one. But, but if not, you know, it tills the soil a little bit. This idea I had, Godzilla versus Avalon. Uh, you know, it's always Godzilla versus, you know, Godzilla versus Megalon, this and that. Uh, I think I did like Godzilla versus Babylon. So just kind of this idea of like establishing Godzilla in sort of, um, you know, olden days, you know, having him, you know, attack some kind of like, you know, medieval uh, European situation. It just, it just kind of seemed right. And so then the story would start with this undersea expedition. And, uh, you know, the, um, this guy kind of discovers what turns out to be, you know, Godzilla's, the, the final resting place of Godzilla. So peaceful down here, you'd hardly know this creature was the scourge of three continents. This could be, you know, taking place after the first Godzilla movie. Who knew exactly what happened to Godzilla's body? Or it could take place, you know, after one of the Godzilla movies, you know, where he kind of like disappears and you don't know what happened to him. And so uh, they take out a drill and start worrying. And then Godzilla, Godzilla's eye opens up kind of like uh, Fin Fang Foom in, in the old Jack Kirby comic. 
And so now, uh, you know, we're at like a port and somebody's fishing and then the bubbles come up and the head starts to emerge and the guy's uh, boat uh, capsizes and now he's swimming huff puff and there's those two giant eyes. Oh my God, it's... But nobody says, uh, nobody says the, the, the word, the, the dirty word of uh, Godzilla. And so we see the Godzilla's back scales start to energize. His uh, atomic breath starts to crackle and then, you know, comes pouring out and he just like burns this, this port. Um, and then, yeah, here's just some other little, uh, you know, just free associating. So here's Godzilla on the uh, incline in Pittsburgh. And I thought, man, Godzilla's got to come to Pittsburgh. And I was even thinking of like a possible pitch. Now, the pitch uh, name I came up with for this was Godzilla Quest is a decent name. Uh, you know, I, I kept the option open of, you know, maybe changing the name as it got uh, as it got closer. But Godzilla Quest was was like sort of the working title. Maybe this is something I could still do is calling it the monster that ate Pittsburgh. Because like anytime on like a sitcom or something, if somebody's watching like a monster movie on TV within the sitcom, like you know they're watching Godzilla, but they always come up with some fake name because they can't say, oh, we're watching Godzilla. They say like, oh, I'm watching the monster that ate Pittsburgh or I'm watching the monster that ate Cleveland or something like that. So I thought like, okay, what if you did an official Godzilla comic called the monster that ate Pittsburgh? So anyway, here's Godzilla in Pittsburgh and he's on the incline and like, one goes down, one goes up, and then they sort of pass each other. It's like a very iconic thing in Pittsburgh. So I thought of, uh, you know, Godzilla sort of straddling them. Uh, and then here's Godzilla in one of those sort of like underwater domed cities that you'd see. I forget which Godzilla movie it's in, but, um, you know, it's, kind of, it's the sort of thing you'd see in a Godzilla movie. And then there's his foot, you know, on the dome and then crack. And then, as, and then here's, here's the aforementioned Godzilla versus Babylon with the hanging gardens of Babylon. And then here's Godzilla attacking the Golden Gate Bridge. He's in San Francisco. Godzilla versus Pentagon, or Godzilla versus the Pentagon. You know, I'm being sort of playful with the language here. Um, so yeah, this idea of you know Godzilla coming to America, and then yeah, just you know, of course at some point, uh, Ghidra, the the Astro Monster, King Ghidra is going to show up. And I mean, it's one of my favorites. I thought this was like a fun way to draw him. And then here's the other part was that I was going to have a and this is the thing that, that Toho cited as, as why they rejected the pitch. But I had this idea for a character who gets an injection of Godzilla DNA, sort of like the, the Godzilla DNA that they, they drill way at the beginning here that, that awakens the beast. They're doing experiments. They, they're doing experiments. They give the guy a shot of Godzilla DNA, and then he starts to get these bumps uh, on the back of his spine, and then boom, he becomes... Uh, Godzilla Man. So that was the concept. You know, to me, a comic isn't just like one idea. A comic is like a million ideas. So one of the ideas was we'd have sort of like a, a superhero in the form of a guy who gets the powers of Godzilla, you know, and, and now he has to fight Godzilla. He's, um, and now this was my concept for what issue one was going to be. That was like the basic, like, you know, some of the beats, some of the, the hits that I had in mind. But now here, this would be the uh, issue one. We start with Kind of like a, um, I was trying to do like the style of like a, a, a calligraphic painting of Godzilla in the state of nature. It is said that at the dawn of time, Godzilla lived in harmony with the creatures of the earth, written, drawn, and colored by Tom Scholey. So that Godzilla is, is um, you know, in the state of nature, Godzilla is a, is a peaceful creature. And it was only, you know, nuclear tests and, and the interference of, of man uh, and his destructive technologies that, that you know put Godzilla on this sort of path of like rage and antagonism. And so we start with a submarine, enemy sighted. So it's kind of like a cat and mouse submarine chase kind of thing. And I had this idea, I've had this idea for a while of like, you know, it's like word balloons. You know, what are they exactly? Like they're, they're part of the comics language, but I thought, you know what? Everybody's so accustomed to reading closed captions, you know, from, you know, watching like a foreign movie. But I mean, I know a lot of people who like, you know, even, you know, they'll watch a movie and put the closed captions on, uh, you know, in their native language, uh, even though they can, they can hear perfectly, just like, just because for some people it kind of like helps their comprehension. It, it drives me nuts. I, I hate uh, when I'm over somebody's house and they do this, but uh, like, I understand people do that. So I thought, you know, we're so accustomed to reading closed captions. 
why not treat the dialogue in a comic that way too? And I thought, well, Godzilla would be perfect because most of the Godzilla movies I've watched were subtitled. So it just kind of fit the, the, the format. So, so I thought this was the perfect time to kind of deploy that idea. Enemy sighted. Fire torpedoes. They fire the torpedo, but it misses. Incoming. Now there's a torpedo coming their way. Dive, dive. And they dive, and then there's this big shape. Barely discernible, but I mean, you know, we're reading a Godzilla comic, so I, I think we know what this is. Enemy sub destroyed. But it wasn't us that did it. Unidentified object sighted. It's big. And now that big shape is smiling and has eyes wide open. We're hit, abandoned ship. Help, help us, somebody. Mayday, mayday, SOS. Now the head emerges. Man overboard. And it's Godzilla. And so this first issue, it's going to be in gray, black, white, and red. Uh, to kind of reference, you know, like the first Godzilla movie in black and white, you know, visually. And then as the series goes on, we'll get to, you know, full color for that sort of, you know, colorful era of Godzilla. The port is in ruins. Whatever it is, it's moving inland. And now we got a train going. There's people on board. Pardon me. Look at that. Everybody's looking out of the one side. What is it? And we see eating the, the trains. Kind of, I think this is like referencing one of the Godzilla posters uh, from the first movie getting like some electric shocks, and now he's laying waste. The city's burning up, and now here's an over-the-shoulder shot of Godzilla looking down, and then he, you know, sets forth another, you know, lets loose another blast, and and now there's a bunch of tanks coming across the bridge. It's raining, the tanks are lining up. Fire! Godzilla's foot goes up, holy, and he crushes the tank. Now he's uh, eating tanks. And then here's Dr. Sirizawa from uh, the first Godzilla movie. I have the means to stop him. Allow me to demonstrate. And he's demonstrating his uh, oxygen destroyer invention that uh, will take you know, a, uh, an alligator or whatever and then just turn it into a skeleton. Easy peasy. Don't do it, you'll die. So he's going down in his uh, aquatic suit and open, opens it up. There's Godzilla, and then he washes up on the shore. Some kids find him. Ah, mom! They open up his helmet, and it's uh, there's his skeleton with his eye patch. You know, here we are at a market. Young man, I've got just the thing for you. Genuine Godzilla teeth. Godzilla tooth extract. Everybody's uh, you know selling sort of Godzilla derived items, and uh, you know as as food, as, as dietary supplements, and who knows if, if any of it's real or not. We can never allow this to happen again. So now there's this meeting going on. It's, it's sort of like a grassroots meeting. And, and part of the idea of this series uh, for Godzilla Quest was that um, in uh, Godzilla movies, you have like the government response, you know, where like the military comes in and fights. And I thought like, how about instead of that, we have like a grassroots uh, civilian response, a sort of like international international grassroots effort of just ordinary citizens getting together to stop Godzilla, and, and that it sort of runs through the decades and, and um, operating in secret, but it's not like a secret government program. It's not like a secret um, you know, wartime program. It's almost like, and, and so when we get into the sort of like psychedelic era of Godzilla, you know, where things get really, um, you know, like 60s and 70s and, and, and psychedelic and rock and roll, that it would be, uh, you know, almost kind of like this like hippie, organization, this sort of like acid rock version of like the little tanks and things uh, that fight, fight Godzilla in the movies. We can never allow this to happen again. Our governments have failed us. Our armies have failed us. The businessmen have failed us. We need to take matters into our own hands. They lied to us from the beginning. Maybe Godzilla is gone for good, but to blindly accept that would be foolish. Where there's one, there's more. It's vital that we devote ourselves to Godzilla prevention. We must do this work in secret, away from prying eyes. I called you all together for a reason. So now we switch to another place. This is like a sort of behind the scenes a meeting, bit like a business meeting or, or, or possibly organized crime. But whatever this is, this is sort of like the uh, you know concerned citizens uh, rallying together from the grassroots. This is like the, um, you know, dark dealings, uh, organized crime, secret ops, government stuff, you know, whatever, you know, that's, that's this here. I called you all together for a reason. 
Imagine if we could control Godzilla, manufacture an army of Godzillas, think what we could accomplish, and that this is possibly the beginning of the program that ends up creating Manzilla. Godzilla Man, Manzilla. And so now um, somebody's getting a tattoo of Dr. Sirizawa on his back. Bzz, bzz, bzz. And now a bunch of people are doing it. Bzz, bzz. It becomes like the tattoo. He's like the guy who saved the world, the guy who stopped Godzilla. And, and there, there becomes like a sort of cult of personality. He becomes, a, a, he becomes like a, um, you know, sort of this like icon for like, you know, Godzilla resistance. I want a tattoo of this. Pretty cool, right? This guy wants a tattoo of Godzilla. Let me see this. And then uh, the tattoo artist rolls it up and starts hitting him over the head with it. Ow, ow, stop. Get out of my shop. You know, like the, the idea, like that a Godzilla tattoo would just be so offensive. Like, you know, Godzilla killed your whole family and now this, this asshole wants a Godzilla tattoo. You know, get the fuck out of here. If you want a tattoo of Dr. Sirizawa, you know, be my guest, but, but a tattoo of Godzilla, fuck off. So he's chasing the guy out the door, hitting him with, with his, a roll, his rolled up drawing of Godzilla. And then roar, roar. Where there's one, there's more. So there's Anguirus uh, from the second Godzilla movie. Pardon me, excuse me. Shh. The curtain goes up. Godzilla. Godzilla. And it's, you know, Godzilla on Broadway. It's, it's the, the Godzilla stage show in, in, you know, full bright color, you know, and that sort of colorful era of Godzilla with Mothra swinging by. This is in poor taste. Godzilla is not a joke, not some piece of kitsch. There's a guy in the audience who's like angry about this, this Godzilla musical. People died and you're making a joke out of it. It's Godzilla time, it's Godzilla time, it's Godzilla time. People died and you're making a joke out of it. Please come with us, sir. And the, uh, the ushers are wearing these kind of Godzilla outfits and have uh, little Godzilla hats. You'll get a full refund at the front desk. And they throw this guy out the door. The day of Godzilla is coming. And so he's walking down, uh, down Broadway and it's Godzilla the musical and there's like a Godzilla cab, um, uh, IDW Entertainment, Godzilla the musical, Toho, Godzilla the musical by Tom Scholey. And the guy's lifting up his, his coat to pull it up you know, over his head and his shirt kind of goes with it you know, in this rainstorm. And we see on his back, uh, that he's got a Godzilla tattoo. So, so this was going to be issue one. This was kind of going to be kind of like a fun, self-contained issue that gives you like the whole story of Godzilla, the whole Godzilla mythology, but then kind of sets you up, kind of uh, is sort of intriguing, uh, whets your appetite for, you know, what what's to come. And like I said, I spent a year on this, so I started making the second issue. <laughs> I started making issue two. You know, nothing was approved yet. You know, we're still waiting to hear back from. From, uh, I, from, from Toho, well, you know, could you cover yourself up? The girl with the Godzilla tattoo. Your tattoo is extremely offensive. And then she asks, she's, she's got a Godzilla tattooed to the front of her, a Godzilla tattooed to the back of her. Were you ever attacked by Godzilla? What if I was? Then you wouldn't be using the precious time left to you telling other people how to live their lives. The Girl with the Godzilla Tattoo by Tom Scholey. You don't even know what Godzilla is. You need to learn some manners. And so then she flips the guy over. It's people like me who spend our lives making sure if Godzilla does come back, we're ready for him. You know, laying in a smashed sand castle with a, a um, you know, sand bucket over his head. And so then part of the idea was that there'd be this, uh, this message board poster called X King Gidra X, um, you know, sort of, you know, creating sort of breadcrumbs that, that the, the Godzilla the Godzilla obsessed community kind of follows and, and, and that eventually like our heroes would kind of, you know, f follow these breadcrumbs and you're not sure, sure who it is behind this. Um, and then King Gidra X is posting, you know, haven't you heard? And then anonymous one, two, three, who are you anyway? That would be telling, follow the breadcrumbs, the museum of natural history. And so the idea would be that, you know, the museum of natural history in this uh, world where Godzilla is real, uh, Godzilla would be a very big part of, of this museum and its um, exhibits. Don't get too close. Do not touch. It's a, it's a model of Godzilla attacking a city. Just remember why we're here, Daryl. Ouch! He, he uh, cuts his finger on the spiky back of, of this little Godzilla model. 
Hello. Your company told me to expect you. I hope you had a good flight. Our museum is one of the oldest in the country. It's several museums under one roof, actually. This is our fine arts collection. So we have a lot of like uh, fine art paintings of Godzilla. Here we are in our newly renovated Hall of Dinosaurs. So you have the Hall of Dinosaurs. And then of course, and there's our star attraction. Of course, Godzilla would, would sort of dwarf all, all those uh, skeletons. And I remember, you know, the first time I uh, went to the Museum of Natural History and saw the, the, the um, dinosaur skeletons, I was so disappointed because they were so small. Like from watching Godzilla movies, I thought that dinosaurs were, you know, like the size of a skyscraper. And I was just really disappointed to see how small they were. So this, uh, you know, kind of had that thought in my head for, for decades. And now I get to put it in a comic that like, you have the Hall of Dinosaurs, and then they have to almost build like a separate uh, ceiling for the Godzilla, uh, the uh, Godzilla replica skeleton. I can't breathe. Are you okay? It's a panic attack. Oh, I'm sorry. That was very insensitive of me. You can catch your breath in our Egyptology section. There's really nothing to worry about. So yeah, of, of course, you know, people, like it would be very natural to have a panic attack when you uh, saw like a Godzilla skeleton, you know, it's, it, you know, th this is, this is a world where everybody's, you know, Godzilla has had a major traumatic Im impact on, on the lives of, of millions, uh, in this world. Uh, and so in the background, we sort of see, uh, these kids with these yellow and green, uh, um, uniform, these yellow and green outfits, uh, you know, we'll see more of them as the story progresses. And so here's, here's sort of like a bio tapestry that, that features Godzilla. These bones are fake. No one's actually found a verified Godzilla bone. Teeth and scales are the only relics of Godzilla that have turned up. And so we got uh, this guy skulking uh, around. Of course, if we did have a Godzilla bone, we wouldn't put it out for display. And so these, these kids, these little junior Godzilla squad gets in this guy's way. Of course, if we did have a Godzilla bone, we wouldn't put it out for display for security purposes. And here's the children's section. This is our children's area, by the way with interactive exhibits. So you can put on a Godzilla costume. I, I love when you see those like photos of like the guy in the Godzilla suit and he's only got like half the suit on. Um, you know, and I always wanted to like, you know, wear the Godzilla costume and knock down some buildings. So this was sort of an idea of like, if they had like a Godzilla exhibit at a museum and you know, you could put on like a Godzilla suit and then knock, set up a bunch of like buildings and then knock them down. My turn. Here he is knocking down all the buildings. And so then they're walking into another exhibit and didn't quite figure out exactly what to do this, but here's, you know, Godzilla fighting Anguirus, a, a little display of that. Can we see it now? It's being prepared for you. We went to a great deal of trouble arranging this for you. We're very grateful. It's just all this Godzilla stuff is very triggering. Ba -deep -ba -doop. We're ready for you. You have 15 minutes. I can't believe it. An actual piece of Godzilla. It looks like a prune. What are you doing? We're gonna get caught. Can we call abort? Abort, abort, abort. Your time is up. Thank you. Looks like a dried prune. Stop, thieves, get them. Get out of the way, kids. Screech. Get us out of here. We lost them. And here's Agent HQ. A agent would be this sort of like anti-Godzilla organization, the, the, the sort of uh, thing that started, uh, you know, back in the 50s, that, that sort of grassroots effort. This is, this is what it becomes, uh, you know, in this era here. Did you get it? We got it. Excellent work. They want you in the situation room. Agent. One, two, three, four. Come on, people. We need to be in tip-top shape. I don't know why they keep partnering us up. So yeah, we got everybody's, uh, you know, everybody's training for the, their, you know, Godzilla fights that they might have to get involved in. We get the job done. Whether it's luck or skill, that's all that matters. Come on in. Don't touch anything. So they have this situation room where they have these little statues of all the different, you know, Godzilla monsters to, you know, work out, uh, you know, what if scenarios. We've got another job lined up for you, unless you'd rather sit this one out. A conglomerate purchased an island, Monster Island. You're posing as potential investors. Hey, did you get it? Did you get it? You can't be in here. Did you see what we did in there? How we helped you make your getaway? We couldn't have done it without you. So, so those kids that were in the yellow and green, uh, the yellow and green uniforms, they're part of agent too. They're sort of the, the agent, you know, junior division. they will be sort of, uh, they will be characters throughout the series, you know, kind of uh, comedic relief. You know, the Godzilla movies, um, ultimately, at least as the series went on, 
they were made for kids. And so, you know, kids were always sort of, you know, a, a part of it. And especially later on, you know, kids sort of become central. So I thought like for a Godzilla, you know, story, especially when you're getting into a sort of, you know, 60s, 70s era, you know, that that would be, you know, just it would be really uh, important to have like the kids get to play a role in it too. And so now we see this guy again who was, you know, following um, following them through the Natural History Museum. They've acquired the relic. Yes, sir. You saw them take it and did nothing to stop them. So yeah, we're getting some like some aliens involved. Forget the names of the Mysterians, maybe I forget. But like the the this you know one of the, one of the you know Godzilla aliens from from one of the movies, uh, or a couple of the movies. You saw them take it and did nothing to stop them. Correct. Was your cover compromised? No, sir. Go home and await further instructions. So now here we are, uh, you know, kind of almost like a uh, a Godzilla Jurassic Park. Rewatching all of these Godzilla movies, it got me thinking. Like, yeah, of course. Jurassic Park, uh, you know, of course they were watching Godzilla because there's so many Godzilla movies, you know, Godzilla versus Mothra. And then this one, I forget which it is, but where they make like a Godzilla amusement park. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that that's the, the Jurassic Park idea is a Godzilla idea where it's like, we're going to make a, uh, you know, like a, a Godzilla tourist attraction. Let's get some investors. So there's the Godzilla building. They, they, uh, the helicopter lands. Now they're riding around in like, you know, Godzilla themed Humvees. So what's your story? Are you a couple or what? Oh, wait, I'm sorry I asked that. It was very, why, yes, we are a couple. A happily married couple. Right, honey? Um, that's right, my cubby dolphin. Cubby dolphin? Why did we stop? Something blocking the road. And what's blocking the road? It's Anguirus. Yeah, just something blocking the road. No big deal. It's just Anguirus. Just a monster that's, that's almost as bad as Godzilla. The uh, Godzilla roller coaster. Now that's a big door. Gasp! And so they see that at this Godzilla amusement park, they actually have Godzilla imprisoned. This uh, imprisoned Godzilla is kind of sad and, 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 you know, drugged and toothless. And, and of course you feel sorry for him. I mean, that's a big part of these monster movies. There's always a point where you feel sorry for the monster, you know, no matter how much of a destructive rampage they've been on. Got to sneak around. So, you know, he's sort of, he's not supposed to be there. He's sneaking around. But then Godzilla's eye opens. But Godzilla doesn't really have the energy to do much of anything. This is the mighty Godzilla. Godzilla required a more radical approach. Powerful radioactive sedatives. We pulled all of his teeth. Snark! Why, you're as gentle as a kitten, aren't you, sweetie? Ha ha ha, the mighty Godzilla. So he's, he's all gums. He doesn't have any teeth. And just little sparks for his radioactive breath his atomic breath. Is that all you got? Ha 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 ha. These readings are off the charts. His vitals, his gums are starting to bulge. Ha ha ha, the mighty Godzilla sparks. Is that all you got? Ha ha ha. These readings are off the charts, his vitals. So again, this is, this is me working these ideas out. So, you know, a couple different approaches to the same scene. But look, the teeth, they're growing back and the, the atomic breath is growing. And He's got little, the teeth are coming back. They're, they're little nubs, but Godzilla can't be stopped this easily. His numbers are spiking. Get out of there. Get out of there. <sniffs> Godzilla as Samson, sort of uh, destroying the whole place. If you know a faster way out, I'm all ears. Come on, let's go. They get on the Godzilla roller coaster and to kind of, you know, speed their way out. But Godzilla's ready for them. And I think I might have cribbed this from like a, a Jack Kirby monster comic. I'm not sure. At the dawn of time. Before the coming of man, Godzilla lived in harmony with the creatures of the earth. So, so we're getting a rereading of that text at the beginning of the series about how at the dawn of time, before the coming of man, Godzilla lived in harmony with the creatures of the earth as Godzilla is destroying and terrorizing, uh, you know, the people at this Godzilla amusement park that has Anguirus, has uh, Rodan. Godzilla walks among us. So Godzilla is back. He's out and he's free. I've still got 312 more pages to go, but I think I'll save that for another video. Um, I think we've done enough for one video, but you know, watch this channel for part two of my, my year spent uh, creating the ultimate Godzilla comic. I'll show you some of this stuff in this 312 page document of, of the remainder of the series. Um, I hope you'll join me then. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics and Fantastic Four Grand Design, and I'll see you next time.